The Art Gallery of Ontario has just completed overhauling its European galleries, with some pieces emerging after being hidden away in the vaults for years. So that is over 120 artworks across five galleries that we now have on view. And so we have built new contexts around these artworks by putting them next to each other, really just by putting two different works of art next to each other, they can speak to each other and speak to us in new ways. One example of this juxtaposition has a Toronto take to it as well, where a painting by Mary Heaster Reed depicting her garden in Witchwood Park is positioned next to a painting by French Impressionist Gustave Caillebotte and his garden painted about two years earlier in 1892. So in the spaces that we're, we're representing, we want our galleries to be immersive. Uh, we want to give people the sensation that they have traveled through space and time. Um, we're really excited to kind of give you a very dense hang. We've taken a number of wonderful works from the vaults that haven't been seen in many years and we've presented them in these really full and vibrant walls. Um, we want to sort of um, give you a sense of the different identities of people who lived in um, in Europe in the 15 and 16 and 1700s and the lives that they lived. The galleries also feature some recent acquisitions as well. It's called Portrait of a Woman Holding an Orange Blossom and at the time that we bought it in January 2020 we did not know who the artist was or who the sitter was and so she really could have been from anywhere in the world and thanks to an incredible research project that you can find with this QR code, we now know that the artist was a white man named Jeremiah Schultz based in Amsterdam. So that locates the artist as well as the sitter in Amsterdam at the heart of the Dutch Empire. Her dress would have been the highest fashion. Partly we were able to date this painting because of the fashion of her dress and how precisely it's, uh, it's represented. But if paintings aren't to your palette, there's also a few sculptures peppered throughout. We sometimes don't show sculpture because it, it takes up a lot of space and, um, and I think sometimes people have a bias towards painting. I'm a sculpture person. I think that this work just speaks for itself. An incredible fabric fold, the nearly life-size scale. It's really hard to stand in front of it and not feel something. But one of the first things you immediately observe when entering the galleries may not be the artwork itself, but the rich wall colors of which they are immersed. Color choice is an interesting thing because you pick a color three or four months in advance, send an email, and then you come back and the color is on the wall whether it, you know, whether you're content with it or not and you live with it. I was really excited to pick this coral because I was looking through a lot of paintings, especially of religious paintings from Europe from the 1600s, and I started to see pinks and purples and violets um, emerging and I realized that these are the colors of passion. Um, and that really is one of the themes. The artists that are represented in this room are really trying to elicit vivid emotional responses from their viewers. In a room about sort of domestic and civic and everyday life, I chose a really sunny, bright blue. I wanted to give the sensation of broad daylight and you know a, a sunny afternoon. I really want historic art to feel vibrant. Um, this work is not dusty, it's, it's not irrelevant. Um, it's really still alive. We make it alive when we look at it and feel something and when we bring it into, you know, present day conversations and, and it's a resource. It's here and it makes our lives richer. For Narcity, I'm Lance McMillan. Thanks for watching and please be sure to like and subscribe to see more content like this.